Hi, my name is Ira J. Weinstein. I'm a former student of Joe Allard. I studied with him at the Manhattan School of Music. Joe is with me today, and we're going to do a demonstration on his saxophone and clarinet principles that he's been teaching for well over 60 years now. Mm -hmm. Joe's, some of Joe's credentials are Arturo Toscanini, uh, playing bass clarinet with him, and also the Bell Telephone Hour. He played the principal clarinet as well as the solo clarinet. Joe, I'd like to show our audience some of our fundamental techniques that we've been teaching, that you've been teaching for so long. Mm -hmm. The first one, the, the position was with your fingers like this. Yeah. yeah. Because it's, you, it's the habit for anybody to go around and do a thing like this. Yeah, you don't want to do that. If you do, the reed won't vibrate well at all. Okay. And the result will be that you won't be, you won't be pleased. Right. Joe, show us the exercise that you have students do with your fingers underneath the jaw. Yeah, and you put the clarinet, right? Yeah. Okay, show, us, right. show us what you do. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, I can only do it to that one unless I'd have to do it here. Okay. me on clarinet you used to hold the clarinet between your legs and you used to go like this also to, to show me yes, how to keep because the average person would do this so you want to keep your corners flat well you do not want to bend the reed because if I do this then the reed is curved that reed shouldn't be curved. It should be flat. It should it vibrate should be, flat. It should because you've got, you've got a tip rail, you've got a side rail, two side rails, and a tip rail. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that reed has to just move, and very, very, very much. Right. I learned it from Gaston Amelé, a Frenchman who couldn't speak English, and I was very, very lucky. And he had me put my thumbs on the jawbone, not, not going beyond the bone itself. Mm -hmm. And then they had to hold it and stop the lip from curving the reed. All right? So oh, here. Rather than. Okay. Now you talk about hearing the pitch. When mm -hmm. you do the overtones, you have to hear the tone. Mm -hmm. Could you talk about that a little bit, when you have to hear the pitch? Yeah. If you don't hear the pitch, it's just, just like turning the mouthpiece on the side. Right, right. So it's important to hear the pitch and the overtone oh, exercise. Yeah. The overtone exercise trains you to hear each That's tone. What you do on a flute. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They don't have a register key. Right. Joe, I want you to show us your... Uh, your overtone series. Now, what are you fingering? Which note are you going to finger? Open C, high C? No, Just open, not... open G. Okay, let's see what you do. sliding at all. Okay, you don't need to slide. When do you need to slide to the position, change position? If the reed is absolutely atrocious, so hard, right? then you have to do something. You know. But uh, what about on volume control? Then you move the mouthpiece a little bit. Sure. Let's see you do that. Yeah. you get. Do, do it, let's say you do that again.
So you're saying that the louder that you get, the more volume that you need, you're actually sliding in yeah. a little bit. Yeah, because you're getting away from here. Okay, you're That's getting it you're, right. Yeah. And is that true for saxophone, clarinet, Definitely. bass Absolutely. clarinet? Yep. There, there was an exercise you once showed me. You started on the G. In fact, maybe I'll even try it. It was like this. Yeah. The moment you get higher than C, then you're going into overtone. Okay, so you're playing G, but you're getting an E, I believe. Well. I can do the, the three of them for all in good pitch. Mm -hmm. And you're using the overtone series? Sure. What other overtone exercises can you show the students watching the tape? Well, you can start where it's uh, the right hand. Mm -hmm. Start on your F down to the lower F. Okay. <laughs> in the saxophone and the flute oh. exercise. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can attempt to do that also. Yep, wait a minute. Let me put my cap on. on oh. my, so you have to turn your arm okay. around. Is this the one? Yeah. Okay. That's perfect. That's exactly it. Don't do it. Don't do this. Just pull. Okay. Then I can't get rid of it, but that's the idea. A little bit further. Yeah. Well, I can't seem to get that, but that's the yeah. idea. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a little bit on. See, when it's new like this, it gets picks up moisture. Can you see that? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then the first thing you know, what you have to do is you take, I use, I call it the white paper treatment. Okay. And you do it against any kind of a... Flat surface? Piece of glass? Yeah, anything. Uh, for instance, that door. Up and do it, nothing or there. tabletop? Yeah. And you put a piece of white paper? I would do it with glass. Mm-hmm. And can you show us, on at least on the tabletop, what you would do? Oh. You just go, of course, you do this on right. a white piece of paper. Right. But I'm just going to give you an idea. And what does that actually do? Well, it works on that moisture, and it dries it up. And also the fibers is pushing sure. back? Sure, sure. You want to push the fibers back into the reed? Well, that's the way you put it. All right, but you, I know what you mean. I go along with that. <laughs> okay, you used to explain it to me that way. Yeah. And you, you, the moisture, you're getting rid of the excess moisture, too. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So now it should play a little bit better. the register key. Yeah. That's just the overtone that you're getting. Yeah. Is that high C? I don't, I don't have the perfect pitch. <laughs> That's the C. You yeah. also talked about the facing, where the reed and the mouthpiece yeah. touch. If you go too close to the edge, it'll close. That's now. If it's too far, it's hideous. It's not musical, and the other one is not musical, but it's nothing. So here.
So you should be able to whisper it. Because, hello, hello. Right now I'm going to do that. And then when you get louder, you take more mouthpiece. Sure. Just like in the... But the very fact that you can come down to that, you can on the flu, you used to show me and the other students that were in my class and, and all of the other students, you used to take the mouthpiece off the clarinet. Can we do, can we do that? And, and take the mouthpiece off the clarinet. And you used to do a exercise to play the scales on the, on the mouthpiece. Yeah, on, on, on the saxophone. Or the saxophone, too. Uh, yeah. Can you demonstrate that for us? Sure. It's an old trumpet thing, you know. Say brass. This is something that brass players use yeah. to develop flexibility, <clears throat> and you feel that it's important for a reed player to be able to do the same. that you're moving the mouthpiece in and out. Could you turn to the side and have oh. the camera? Let's see how that works on the saxophone sure. now. Okay. The saxophone mouthpiece. It's the mm -hmm. same principle. Sure. that if you are going to play something on the horn, you have to hear before it comes out of the horn. And they, oh, I don't want to say, you read, I have magazines that are sent to me, and they talk about the diaphragm. Well, it's not so much the diaphragm, but it's the ear. Different. The ear, uh, ear keeps everything working properly. Sure. Joe, show us some <laughs> of the principles that you have. Now, that's the saxophone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> With the mouth, the talk about the 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 chewing that you used to talk mm -hmm. about, and also as far as keeping your your upper lip flexible. And you know, I used to practice with my lip off the complete, like this. <laughs> So the top teeth and lip are receiving. Right. Could you talk about the receiving, the, the pressure coming up rather than going down? Or the chewing motion, or X, as you used to say. I feel that my teeth are just like the hammers of the piano. Right. Now the then, wood part of the hammer. Yeah. And the lip is, is what? The felt. The felt glued to the hammer on the piano. But what strikes it, it's the hammer. So what's our hammer? X. 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 The lower teeth. Da, 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 da. The lower teeth. Mm -hmm. It makes a lot of sense. You get the most projection that way. Sure. What would happen if you just used your lip and you didn't use your teeth? You can't. You can just go like this. In two minutes, you'd be, and you'd have a sore throat and all kinds of things. What is the exercise that you learn from the flute? Well, F down, E down, E flat down. W without the register key, correct? The, yeah, they don't have the register key. Could you demonstrate that for us? Sure. And I know that you used to 
teach me that when you practice that way, the intensity of the higher register is, is stronger. Well, it's a question of you hear it, and then it sends a message down in here which you'll never, never know. Joe, I want to continue and make sure that our audience understands the principle of chewing, or the syllable X. Mm -hmm. Would you show us more on that? So you're actually what you call chewing. Yeah. Okay. Now the position of the tongue, how would you describe that? Here, on the side and... Anchored against the top teeth. Right. Anchored against the top teeth and thinking yeah. of pi, yeah. like I in can move, I can move the hair in the head from here. I have a better idea, Joe. Let's do the candle. <laughs> <laughs> we, we practiced this before. All right. Show us both ways. The way that doesn't work first, okay? Let's get this lit. The way that... The <gasps> it, <sighs> what did you do the time that it worked? The time that you blew out the candle? Show us the position of your tongue. It's very much the way I play saxophone and play clarinet. Okay. Yeah. Just like I can move the hair in your head. <laughs> Let's see you do that. Sure. <laughs> well, I'm feeling a very strong force of air. Yes, and then the, you can see it right here moving. Okay. <laughs> and how would you do it if you weren't doing it that way? The way that... <gasps> I don't feel any air at all. No, that's right. And that reed isn't going to vibrate that way. So what is a syllable that you're thinking of with the tongue? Well, actually, the best way to do it is with a French mm. two. 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 And the American two. will say to, to. But you're dropping your jaw, which yeah, you don't want to do. Yeah, and you're dropping your tongue. To, to. But in French, it's two, 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 two. So the American way that would work. Can you also think of the term hit, like like hit? No. That hit, hit. The no. front edge of the tongue is going downward. And hit, 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 hit. That's bad. Has no. So it so it's t. T. So it's t. 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 But they say t. 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 And the t. 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 And I used to practice it with my lip off the mouthpiece. Still with the saxophone, I want to show the students that will be watching this tape, again, mm -hmm. keeping the chewing up and the pressure off of the top. Right. What would happen if you put too much pressure on top of the mouthpiece? All right. I'll, I'll do it first way, and then I'll do it the other. Okay. <laughs> You're pushing down. Yeah. In fact, um, one, one yeah. thing that I notice a lot of saxophone players have is teeth marks on top of the yeah, yeah. and it really shouldn't be there because yeah. it doesn't do anything. No, and they think then you, your tongue goes, drops, drop your tongue. Uh, <sighs> like ta. No, ta. That's a, mis that's a that's, misconception. Oh, that's, when, you, yeah. when you put ta, your tongue is going down into... Let's, what, what would happen if you played like that, if you played like ta? Let's see what would happen. Ha. All right. You're cutting off the air supply. Yeah. And now you're keeping your, your lip up. Yeah. What about the high overtones on the saxophone? What would you, what are some exercises? Do you I have hardly put your two fingers on the lip. 
You're rolling your lip out. Don't you press. Okay. I'll, I'll press it. Okay. Get them stiff. Okay. Yeah, so that they, they both come at the same Yeah. 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 I you are doing it. I feel your teeth coming through your Yeah, lip. but don't you do this okay. because I don't do that with okay. my top teeth. Okay. I don't go there. I go here. Okay. Hello. Here, 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 here. That's if the way I you go, talk. If I did that, I'd fall off the chair. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so act for it. Uh, Teeth, yeah. Sure. Now, what about rolling your lip in or out? What do you, if you actually the? Well, if you roll it out, you're going you're going to have a lot of an awful lot of problems. <laughs> you can't do anything there. <laughs> well, how far out should your lip be rolled? Is there any recommendation on that? Well, whatever suits you, I'm sure. Some people have a big lip, some people have a very thin lip. And mine is just sort of in between. Mm -hmm. Yours is in between, too. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people have a big lip and others have a very thin lip. Right. One thing you used to show me was that the more, if I rolled the lip out mm -hmm. a little bit, I would get more highs in my sound. If I rolled it in, I That's guess. when you'd get more sides at the end. More highs. Yeah. Right. Can you demonstrate that? <laughs> See there, that's only here. On the inside of your lip. Yeah. On the inside of your lip. Mm -hmm. And then when you go into the lower register, uh -huh. and you're rolling it in. A little bit. A little bit. Mm -hmm. But that's enough. For instance, here. Okay. There's no difference in the position of it. Mm -hmm. It was just a. sends a message down in here, and in here you don't know you have a diaphragm. That's just a lot of, you know, lock me. Yeah. And let's talk about breathing. I know there are a uh, lot of misconceptions about okay. breathing, and okay. the diaphragm and all of that. What do you have to say about that? Well, I think that the word diaphragm is used to too much. How do you mean too much? Well, because of diaphragm, my gosh, you look into the con you look into the dictionary about the diaphragm, and it'll tell you about the diaphragm. But you're saying that it doesn't have that much importance. No, no, it's just that I don't. When I'm going to play, I don't say, "Oh, I've got my, I've got to get my diaphragm going." No. Well, I know a lot of teachers teach that support with the diaphragm. Support is a lot of garbage. Okay, so. We're going to show I have our, to support my wife. <laughs> Fine, you know, that's wonderful. That's okay. So show me the proper technique for breathing that oh, I'm going to get the right. most effectiveness. Put your hand on, all right. Your rib cage. Yeah, and then put, and your, your, no, put your thumb. It's a more comfortable. Okay, th just this one. Oh, and don't press. Just witness it. Okay. A little bit more. Just a little bit. Okay, that's a little bit more than, yeah. Okay, your rib cage is still open, and your mid section is getting smaller, and your rib cage stays open. Hmm. So let me see if I can do that correctly. Mm -hmm. As I understand it, I'm um, one at your ribs. My ribs open up first. Don't open up. Expand first. <laughs> That's a better word. Yeah, all okay, right. so I'm expanding yeah. my rib cage. All right, now put your thumb above your navel mm -hmm. and your middle finger. Well, just below it. A, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I should feel my rib cage expanding first. Oh, definitely. Okay, and then the midsection. 
Yeah. And then the lower part. And well, it, that, that, that's... It happens that's, automatically. Yeah, that'll... Good. Yeah. Yeah. And wait for this until this is gone, as far as it goes. There's an exercise that you, we used to work on. Let's show our audience what that is. And I'm lying down like this, and, yep. I, and I lift my buttocks up right. like that. Now I'll leave it that way. Okay, All just right. breathe now normally. Just breathe normally. I'll, I'll put your hand, your head, relax. So I feel my rib cage expanding first. Right. Exactly. Yep. And then the opposite, down here first. Exactly. And then one is inhaling and the other one is exhaling. All right, now this is a new read. Right? Okay. Now I'm going to vibrate right in the middle to give me an idea of what's, what's, what's happening. Let's say. Mm -hmm. Now that does not give me anything at all. It's too hard. So I'll do it this way so that I'll be... And that's one, and that's the other. So you're okay. testing each side. You're, yeah. you're turning it, you're yeah. tilting it. <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous. But now... Unplayable. Yeah. But now, it will make it playable. Joe, what are you actually doing now? I'm taking my knife and going along now that's your read. Where are you taking that off from? From here. The side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take off a little bit more in there because that's hard. And you're leaving the heart of the read alone? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you don't go into the heart. Why is that? You're taking the heart out of yourself. How, how about that? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good analogy. Yeah. So see now, you see what happens here, how long it goes? Mm -hmm. A little while ago, I would have broken the reed in order to come to that far. So you feel it's generally better to start with a harder reed and take some down? Well, that's not how, that's not how you can get reeds. You buy them. And if they are like this, then you, you'll do it. Mm -hmm. So you're balancing the reed now, basically. Mm -hmm. I don't call that balancing. I'm just taking a lot of this on the side to make it possible for me to, to work on it. Mm -hmm. And you're keeping the ligature on the mouthpiece when you put the reed in. Well, it doesn't make any difference, except if you, you have the reed on, and then you put the ligature on, and you sub, if somebody says, hey, Joe, I'll go like this, then you break the reed. And you don't want that to happen. You don't want that to happen. You see, to me... You're still testing the sides of the reed. Different Too stiff? Way. Yeah. Did you hear it? Yes, I heard it. Yeah. Sounded like your attack was airy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. What about the proper care of a reed? How should you care for it? Once you get it playing where you like it. Well, what I'm doing here, if I didn't do this, this reed, you'd say, is no good. It's too hard. Mm -hmm. And you'd go broke that way. And you still, every time that you buy reeds, you just say to yourself. They're very expensive. Yes. Sure. So therefore, if you know how to do this, then you're in, you're in business. Well, once you get the reed playing exactly the way you like it, let's say you take off enough and it's playing good. Look at all, look at all the, this in here. Shavings. How do you keep the reed to last? How do you keep the reed lasting a long time? Do you have any... any no more than how can you tell when your mother and father are going to die? It's hard to tell. You have no way of knowing. Sure, it's hard to tell. It's the same thing when the reed is going to die. How do you know? Should you use one of those reed guards? Should you leave it on the mouthpiece overnight? Sure, Make as sense. long as you wipe the ins wipe out the moisture in, in the inside of the mouthpiece. So there's no excess of moisture. Sure. Mm -hmm. And you just put it on. Put it, leave it back on. Sometimes I leave my reed on after a job and and I notice that it's very it's still very wet the next day. I didn't clean the moisture yeah. out. Yeah. yeah. 
Well, if you get a good one, you, d you don't want to leave it there overnight. You know, I mean, you can With kind too of, much moisture. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, the right side does not vibrate well enough, so... And you're knowing that by t actually tilting the, uh, m the mouthpiece from one side, just slightly, so that you can vibrate one side and then the other side. Right. That's the way it feels. Like, let's see you play the Abirch Concerto now. <laughs> right? <laughs> and you couldn't even play blown that before at all no. with the read the other way. The right is still too much. Joe, what I'd like to do is show the video audience uh, what it's like to practice these. Um, exercises, the overtones, and some of the other principles. So let's pretend we're in an actual lesson here. Uh, the first one that I wanted to try was the F to F, the lower F, right. without the octave key, much like the flute exercise. Yeah. you can and almost open your mouth until you, it just almost I'm actually oh, rolling out yeah, so I get oh the thin yeah, part of the yeah, lip yeah. so how often do you did you ever have you ever gone on a job when you played it that high I can't say I have but it's a good exercise yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> the flexibility I'm noticing that my tongue is changing position slightly and I, I'm not even aware of uh, how do you explain that it's just the ear is telling my the tongue ear is telling and it's pretty hard to say it's pretty hard to say nobody knows but it's my inner ear nobody I'm hearing the nobody knows <laughs> Now, you mentioned about keeping the pressure off the top. Let's see if I can oh, demonstrate. Oh, definitely. The, the upper body of teeth is a receiving. Is a rec the lower body of teeth is what? A baby. Just chewing. Uh, Mama. Yeah. X. 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 Joe, you're amazing. How did you, these overtones, I don't know many people that have taught them to me. So I'm amazed that you can still do that. That's amazing. <laughs> It'll drive anybody crazy, but that's all right. Yeah. Joe, I want to thank you for your time oh, and the time yeah. that you've spent showing us these principles. I'm sure many people are going to benefit from this. Oh, good. Uh, and uh, the legacy of Joe Allard lives on. <laughs>